Hi, and welcome to the Build Your Own Data Logger course, a joint collaboration between Freak Labs and Wild Labs. I'm Jacinta from Freak Labs. This is Module 3, Submodule 5, Reading and Writing to the SD Card. In Module 3-4, we learnt about real-time clocks and how to set and read the date and time via the command line. In 3-5, we'll be diving into memory cards, what all those symbols mean, learning a little bit about the FAT32 file system, and reading and writing files to our SD card. This intro video is a little bit long, but stick with us as we go down the SD card rabbit hole with lots of good tables and links for future reference. After this video, I guarantee you'll never look at memory cards the same. So what are memory cards? Basically, they're a flash memory storage device. As wildlife and conservation researchers, I'm sure you're all familiar with them. But let's look at what's actually going on inside these little rectangle things that keep all our precious data safe. Memory cards contain flash memory, and you may remember from video one that flash memory is non-volatile, which means it stores data even without power. There are two types of flash memory, NAND and NOR. And no, I didn't just make that up. We'll be going a bit deeper into NAND flash later and how it affects the lifespan of our SD card. There are also various types of memory cards, such as secure digital or SD cards. And we'll mostly be referring to SD cards during this video because we're using a micro SD card on the wild logger. Multimedia cards and compact flash. Within each of those categories, there's also cards with different storage capacities, read write speeds, physical dimensions, and so on. And different devices support different types of memory cards. So different memory cards also have varying levels of cost, quality, reliability, and endurance. Endurance simply means how many times you can read, write, and erase data onto the memory card before it becomes unusable. One thing to remember with memory cards is you do get what you pay for. This doesn't mean you need to get the most expensive memory card, but it is good to understand when you can cut costs and when you'd want to pay a bit more for a better quality one. So let's take a quick look at the different types of memory cards. Whilst there seems to be a lot, they're usually built upon the same base flash memory and or manufacturing processes and so all have similar specs and functionality. You may wonder why there's not just one standard that everyone can agree on, and it's usually because multiple companies develop the memory cards and so call them different names. This kind of overlap or fragmentation happens quite a bit in the tech and hardware industry as technology develops and progresses and manufacturers compete. So each type of memory card has different physical dimensions, storage, read-write, speeds, and is used for different devices. However, they all mostly use NAND flash, and we'll see why this is important later. SD or Secure Digital is what we're using, and you're probably familiar with the SD cards already. MMC or Multimedia Cards are a precursor to SD cards, and there's different kinds, such as MMC Micro, just like there's a Micro SD. Compact Flash is another early memory card format and also uses NAND Flash. Compact Flash is often used in digital SLR cameras, video recorders, like those made by Canon and Nikon. So here's some things we think about when selecting SD cards for a deployment, and it's pretty straightforward. Firstly, what are our application requirements? Are we just logging text or are we also logging images and video and so need faster write speeds and more storage? And how often and how critical is the data? E.g. if we lost it, would the whole deployment be a waste of time? And often the answer is yes to that question. Then we look at what the deployment conditions are like. Mostly how cold is it going to get? Most consumer memory cards operate between negative 25 and plus 85 degrees Celsius. There are industrial grade memory cards that operate from negative 40 degrees Celsius. And we'll go through consumer versus industrial grade SD cards a bit later also. We consider then how long the SD card will be collecting data before we can swap it out or replace it. Then we come to the card's specs and features. First, what's compatible with our device? What are the physical dimensions we need? Standard, mini or micro, for example. But also, what read-write speeds can our device support? For example, you may be able to use a faster and bigger memory card in, say, a camera. But if the camera doesn't support the faster read-write speeds, then you won't get the benefits of the faster card. An important consideration for deployment is how much power the SD card consumes because this directly affects the battery life of our device. Cheaper SD cards may not have low power mode enabled and that will sting us in the field. This information isn't found in the card specs very often, 
but there's a good link that does some comparisons, which we've included in the terminology sheet. Another important consideration is endurance, or how many times you can program an array data to the card until it degrades and can't be used anymore. Endurance is related to the number of program or write and erase cycles the SD card can handle, and this is related to the type of NAND flash used in the card. We'll look at that in more detail later. Then, of course, always lurking in the background is budget. Bom -bom. From all these questions, we start to get an idea of the quality and card specs we'll need. In the case of a wild logger, we'll need a micro SD card to fit the device. We'll be taking text data and probably set it to take a reading every hour or few hours or be triggered by the PIR motion sensor. We don't need super fast read write speeds and we won't be operating our devices below negative 25 degrees. So a cheapish micro SD card with 32 gig or less should be fine. For bioacoustics or camera trapping, you'd probably want something with bigger storage capacity and faster read write speeds. Now let's look at all those symbols on the card. The different symbols relate to the type of card it is, the storage capacity, the read speed, the write speeds, and the data transfer speed. The storage capacity is pretty straightforward. It's how much data the card can hold, and it's good to note that there's usually a little less storage available than what's indicated on the card. Then there's the card type. For SD, there's four types that have different storage capacity and read-write speed limits. There's a standard SD, there's SD high capacity, SD extended capacity and SD ultra capacity. Yeah, I know. The main difference between the types is the storage capacity and the file allocation table or FAT version used for the file system. A file system is basically the way the flash memory organizes files so they can be written, read and erased. We'll talk more about that in lab A. On the wild logger, we'll be using the Arduino SD FAT library that supports FAT16 or FAT32 file system on our micro SD card. SD cards are further broken down into standard, mini and micro SDs according to the physical dimensions. And a lot of the specs you get on the standard you can also get on the micro or mini SD. Here's the physical side differences. Now let's look at the speeds. There are three main types of speeds. The read speed, the write speed and the bus speed. The read speed is how quickly data can be read from the card. The write speeds relate to how quickly data, text, video and images for example, are written to the card. And there are three types of classifications. The standard speed class, the ultra high speed class and the video speed class. The actual write speeds within each of these classes overlap. Stay with me for a moment, it will become clearer on the next few slides. The bus speed is how fast data can be transferred to and from the SD card e.g. from the SD card to your PC. Since we're using Arduino, we'll also be reading and writing to the SD cards at a lower speed. So what do all these write speeds actually mean? The best way to understand them is visually. You can see here the speed class 10, the UHS speed class 1 and the video speed class 10 all have a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second. So the speed classes are just different ways to categorize the minimum write speed. And the reason there's overlap is because the read-write speeds keep getting faster and so new classes have been invented. So this is how the write speeds translate into video quality. You can see a speed class of 10 straddles 4K, HD and standard video quality. And here's how it relates to the quality of images. So we'll now leave you to explore the wonderful world of SD write speeds on your own. Let's move on to the bus speed. You may remember the bus speed is how quickly data can be sent via the port. And so this basically means how quickly can data be transferred from the SD card to your device or to your PC and vice versa. A UH bus speed of one gives us a max transfer speed of 104 megabytes per second. A UHS speed of two gives us a maximum bus speed of 312 megabytes per second. And UHS three, a max speed of 624 megabytes per second. Now let's look at some specs that aren't on the SD card and that are a bit harder to find. We're interested in two things. The first is the program erase cycle, or PE cycle, i.e. how many times the SD card can have data written and erased from it before it becomes unusable. And two, the power consumption of the SD card. Memory cards program or write data to what's known as blocks in the flash memory cell. And once these blocks are full, it needs to erase old data 
so new data can be written to the same block. This is known as the program erase cycle, which is what determines the lifespan of the memory card, unless it gets wet or is snapped in two or something. Each PE cycle causes a physical degradation or wear and tear on the physical materials that make up the flash memory. So there's a finite number of program erase cycles that the SD or memory card can handle. Memory cards will use a hardware or software layer called wear leveling to manage where the data is written to and erased from to try and minimize the number of PE cycles and therefore increase the lifespan, but also to make sure that the physical degradation happens evenly across the SD card. We mentioned earlier that memory cards use NAND flash memory, and there are three types of NAND flash memory single level cell, multi-level cell, and triple level cell. And each of these have got different PE cycle limits. We won't go into too much detail about how they're different or why they're different, but if you want to, we've got some good links in the terminology sheet. For our purposes, we wanna know how each of these types of NAND flash memory relates to the PE cycles. Single level cell based memory cards have around 100,000 PE cycles, but they read and write much slower and are more expensive. Multi-level cell or MLC based memory cards have around 3000 PE cycles and are in the mid range as far as cost and read write speeds. Triple level cell or TLC based memory cards are less expensive and have around 1000 PE cycles. They're the ones that are often used in consumer devices. There are also new types of NAND flash being developed such as quad level cells and 3D MLC and so on. So this all translates to SLC being the higher grade. It's the highest endurance, it's the most robust, it's the most expensive, but it holds less data. MLC is the middle grade. It has a mid-level endurance and reliability at a more moderate cost. And it's suitable if you need higher storage capacity and maybe you, you need a wide temperature range that the SD card can operate in. TLC is lower grade. It's the lowest endurance, least expensive, but it also requires the most power and has a very high density of mass storage. So hopefully by now, when you look at some of these specs, they're starting to make sense. Now let's move on to power consumption. SD cards consume a lot of power and in embedded devices like our data logger, they're usually one of the most power hungry components on the devices. Needless to say, the more you need to read and write to your card, the longer it needs to be on and the quicker you drain your batteries. That's why we switch off the SD card or put it into low power mode and wake it up with a real time clock when we need to write to it. The power consumption of SD cards varies by its speed mode, manufacturer model. Some memory cards already have low power mode enabled and this info is usually included in the specs. If it's not mentioned, a good rule of thumb is that it's not enabled. So in the terminology sheet, we've got a good comparison on some common SD cards. Finally, let's take a quick look at consumer versus industrial SD cards and sum up what we know. Generally, retail or consumer cards are cheaper. They usually have MLC or TLC NAND flash, and a mid to low endurance or less PE cycles. They operate between negative 25 to plus 85 degrees Celsius, and they may not have low power mode enabled, and they probably have no wear leveling software or hardware. In comparison, industrial SD cards are much more expensive, and they usually have SLC or MLC NAND flash, so high mid to endurance. They have low power mode, but it may need to be enabled, and they operate in a wider range of temperatures from negative 40 to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Often they'll come in protective casing and they'll be waterproofed, and they have other features like power failure protection and advanced wear leveling software and hardware. So now that we understand a bit more about SD cards, let's go back to our data logger. As we mentioned, for the wild logger, we'll be saving small amounts of text data to a micro SD card with a FAT32 file system. You'll need a cheapish micro SD card with 32 gig or less, and you'll need to put it into the micro SD card slot on the wild logger board. In Lab 5A, we'll be writing and reading our first files to the SD card. Let's get into some code. 